So anyone that has to carry a lighting kit around with them wishes that their kit was smaller and more portable, especially if you're going between all sorts of different places around the country, or maybe jumping on and off the tube in London, anything like that. And so what me and Luke have done with this kit is we've tried to make a portable interview lighting kit that is for soft interview piece to camera setups or anything like what we're filming right here and now. So this is a two head kit that's been put together with a mixture of products from iFootage and Manfrotto. So let's start with the outside. The whole thing is based around this Manfrotto tough case. The reason that I've chosen this case particularly one, it's nice and compact, so it fits this amount of kit really nicely. Two, it's got wheels on it, so it's easy to wheel around and a hand pull out handle, of course. But three, it's got these strap um, hooks on the front so that you can actually attach a couple of accessories or just ratchet straps like I have here onto the front of your hard case, which is so important in this situation. As you see, I'm using it here to attach the light stands. Now the actual bundle that customers are gonna buy online will have the proper Manfrotto tripod bag here, which is a much nicer system than just ratcheting to the top of the case. But there's very few hard cases on the market that have those little loop straps. So that's why we picked this one. So if I undo them, we've got three um, light stands in here. The reason that we've got three is one for each light. Like I said, it's a two head kit. And then a third one for the diffusion, which I'll talk more about in a minute. So let's go inside the case. Let's talk about the lights first, because these of course are the most important bit. These are what makes the entire thing possible and what inspired us to do this in the first place. These are the iFootage Anglerfish portable mini cob lights, and they're absolutely brilliant. These are the daylight models. We've got the 130 DNA and the 60 DNA. There is of course bicolor versions of these as well. The daylight ones specifically, as across all of iFootage's range, to be honest, are unbelievably color accurate. These are the most color accurate lights I've ever tested, including incredibly expensive 10 grand lights or so. There is nothing that comes close to this. Lots of brands have one this size, the 60DN. It's got the Amaran 60, it's very popular, Nanlite little 60 features, the little Zion ones, and they're all fantastic. But this is the light that really made me inspired to put this together because it's so much brighter. This is, that's a 60 watt fixture and this is a 130 watt fixture in the same tiny form factor with a USB-C port to power it off batteries and the pistol grip attachment for V-Locks. So this is the brightness of an Aperture 120D, for example, in the palm of your hand like this. It, as a key light, this really enables this whole idea to work. So those are the lights. With, they do come with a mini Bowens on the front um, and you can get a Bowens mount adapter to go to the larger size Bowens. In this setup, we haven't included that because it's not needed. We're doing diffusion in a different way. There, this can easily slot into here and free up this whole space up here. Or if you don't need mains power, this entire bit down here is just taken up by the mains power cables. So if you either need shorter cables or don't want mains power at all, you can free up this entire space in the case by taking those out. We've chosen to go with mains power because it's for interviews primarily. So it means you can run around all over the place, shoot for as long as you need to without having to worry about power, but you could easily stick some battery options in here, either USB-C ones or the pistol grips and V-locks. Um, these are the two reflectors um, in case they're needed. They just slot inside each other really nicely here like that. And this is diffusion. So the idea here was to create an interview setup with a very large soft key light, exactly like the one I'm using here for this piece of camera. This is um, iFootage's large 90 centimeter softbox, and it's beautiful, it creates this lovely soft light that falls across the talent. But it's big, both when it's set up and when it's packed down, it's really large. It almost takes up an entire lighting stand bag by itself. And even their smaller 60 centimeter ones would take up nearly this entire case when packed down. So that's how we ended up on this from Manfrotto. This is their Halo Compact Diffuser. And as you can see, it packs down into this tiny little bag, which makes it ideal for just chucking in your normal camera bag or in a little case like this. So it's based around this sort of almost tent pole style setup 
which is the external ring. So you put all of those together and then clip on this diffuser. We use this a lot in our videos when we're shooting outside. We use it to hold up and block the natural direct sunlight off someone's face to diffuse it a little bit. But it's also perfect in this situation. The handle has a little screw thread on it, so you can easily stick it on top of one of these light stands and have it in front of your key light to be a nice soft source. And then the second light is free to do with whatever you need to do, whether it's a backlight, a fill light, a background light, anything like that. So this takes up so much less space than a softbox and when it's set up is actually bigger and softer as well. So it's a really nice solution. So let's get all this out of the box, set it up and show you some real world examples. Right, so let's set it up and see what this looks like actually in practice. I've set up a very simple piece to camera interview style setup here. Liam has kindly offered to just sit still for 10 minutes and stare at a camera for me. Um, and I've got everything out of the box, so let's have a look at it. We've got the 60DN and the 130DNA, the two main lights. We'll put the 130 as the key light over here, because obviously that's the brighter of the two lights, so that's the main key light. And we'll put the smaller light, the 60, as the backlight behind him. Both of which I've got, of course, plugged into mains power to mean that they will never run out of juice. So let's keep that one off for the moment. And that one. So this is our diffuser, the huge Halo Compact. This is what it looks like when it's all set up. As, as I was saying earlier, it's absolutely massive. You see how big it is considering compared to how small of a size it took up in the, um, in the case. And that's what it's all about with travel kits. For me is how big a diffusion source can I have as my main soft key light in as small a travel form factor as possible which is why I love this thing I think it's absolutely brilliant just screw it into the third light stand here and that's why I've included three light stands in the box so let's turn on the key light and see what we've got we'll also shut out that window just to block out any of the natural light I mean, straight away, that looks really quite good. It's a little underexposed maybe, but it's very soft, flattering light on Liam. We've got really nice transition. The no shadow's not too enhanced. It's nice and soft. That looks like a really good sort of soft interview source straight away, absolutely minimal effort. If we compare that to what it would look like without the diffuser, with just the bare light pointed at him, you can see how harsh that is. Now, I would personally absolutely never light somebody like this for a corporate interview or a documentary interview, anything like that. I mean, there will be some cases where you want them to look really sort of tough, maybe something like that. But if you look at what it's doing to the highlights on his face, the shadow, the nose shadow, for example, the really harsh cut line underneath his chin, it's a very, very hard, unflattering, tough style of lighting. And there might be some situations where that's appropriate, but for the vast majority of work, it's gonna be much more suitable to have a nice big soft light. So in terms of placement, we don't want too far around to the side and we don't want too far in front of him. I like a sort of 45 degree angle and just walking this big diffusion in as close as we can get it to him without it popping into frame. And then with the actual light, all we're trying to do is fill as much as possible of the diffusion sheet. And now, as you can see, that's really nice, soft, flattering light. I might just push it all slightly this way. You can see what happens to the image as I pull it further round and make it slightly more side on. Pretty much all of the left-hand side of his face there is in shadow. If we split the difference, this might be where I would normally do it. So that there's just that sort of Rembrandt style triangle of light um, on his cheek and if I make this light behind the source a bit taller that's going to help with that angle there we go like that perfect that's really nice so that's the key light and of course the key light is the most important light of the bunch that's what's lighting your subject that's the the 
and, you know, if that is the only light you set up in a situation like this, you're still going to be all right. That is the most important one to get right. And so that's the one that I always start with first. With the second light, there is all sorts of things you could do with this. This could be a background light. It can be a backlight, little accent lights. And if you add to this the Fresnel or a gobo mount or all sorts of different accessories, you can add to this in order to make it much more flexible. Um, if you want to take this that one step further, but for now with this, what I would probably say most people would do is have this on really, really dim as the backlight. So on the opposite side to the key and all it's doing is just hitting this side of his face there a little bit. You can see as I put my hand in front of it, what it's doing to Liam's face there. And that's just separating him from the background. It's giving him a bit of that 3D pop that we look for. In video, if I walk this too far this way, it's gonna be hitting too much of his face, can be really unflattering. The other thing you could do with this is just point it at the ceiling and blast it, and then it will be quite a standard sort of fill light to fill in one side of his face and give a much flatter look, which could be quite nice. The other thing we could do with this is use it as a background light. So I'm actually gonna take it off the stand for this and just hit some of the wall with it. And this is where things like gobos, for example, really come into play to mean that you can, you can create some really nice effects. But if I do something like that, for example, it achieves the same thing as the backlight where it's separating him from the background because it's so much brighter here than it is on the side of his face. I think that looks a bit moody with the side like that, so I might pair that with more of a overall front-on key, for example, just to keep the light on him a little bit more neutral because it's a bit more stylistic in the background. But that's another way of using that second light to add a bit of separation. Now, obviously, if you want to add small portable lights into this, anything like that, you can do it. But with just two lights that fit inside a relatively small hard case, easy to jump in and off the train, to take around, could you put in the boot of your car? I think you get a huge amount of lighting potential and capabilities for this sort of simple interview style work in a very lightweight and pretty low cost package as well. So if you've got any questions about any of this, let us know down in the comment section below and we'll get back to you straight away. And if you want to buy it, of course, just head over to prov.co.uk. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.